Hey there, today I'm gonna to show you how to create these custom floating bedside tables. Let's get started. So the first step is to cut all of our material to size. I'm gonna be using half inch MDF for my side tables as they're going to be painted, but you can use whatever material you'd like. Let's get to cutting. The side tables I'll be building today will be 18 inches wide, 12 inches deep, and six inches high. However, you can customize these dimensions to suit your needs for your space. I started by ripping everything down on the table saw to get it to the right width and make the pieces a bit more manageable. And then once I was done with that, I can move over to the miter saw to cut things down to the proper length. I'm lucky enough to have a sliding miter saw so I can make all these cuts in one pass. However, if you don't have one, you can make the cut twice and just flip the board over in between each cut. All right, now that we have all of our pieces cut, we can start assembly. We're gonna be building two outer boxes as well as two drawers. So four boxes in total. I have all the pieces marked out so you don't get anything confused. We're gonna be using brad nails and wood glue to assemble everything. And if needed, I can add screws for additional support. Let's get started. So we're going to be starting by building the outer boxes that the drawers will sit inside of. And I found that just using wood glue and brad nails was plenty strong and that screws weren't necessary. This part isn't too complicated, but the key here is to make sure everything's aligned properly and you have everything nice and flush. Next up, I began building the drawers and this is built in a similar fashion to the outer boxes. Again, just making sure everything's nice and flush and level with one another. All right, so we finished assembling both of our two side tables. The only thing we didn't do was put on the top to both of these. And we did that for a reason because we still need to mount the drawer slides for the drawer in here. And because they're under mounted, you're gonna have to screw in to from the top here and it'll be a lot easier if that top piece is not just yet. So let's go ahead and mount those drawer slides now. I looked around and I found the best bang for your buck drawer slides on Amazon. And I'll link these down in the description if you wanna purchase them for yourself. All right, so the first step that we wanna do is attach the drawer slide to the outer box itself. Then we'll attach it to the actual drawer. And so the way these go in is they're actually mounted on the sides like this. So we'll attach these first and then we'll attach the drawer onto those. So I misspoke earlier, you can actually attach these from the side. However, I do think having that top piece not installed yet still makes it a lot easier. Now we need to mark out where we are going to install these two things, which mount to the drawer, which then these mount to the drawer slides. So first we're going to pull these out all of the way. Then we're going to put our drawer on top. Then we're going to go underneath. And again, this is a bit hard to show on camera. but you'll take each one, line it up with your drawer slide, and then mark where you want to drill those holes. Then I'll do the other side. Olive's coming to say hi. Hello. All right, now after those are marked, you can take your drawer off and drill those pilot holes and then install these two. When using MDF, especially half inch MDF, I suggest doing some pilot holes for your screws as the screws are pretty small and it definitely helps to get a good tight grip. After those were installed, I could then mount the drawer onto the slides and test to make sure that it worked properly. And to my surprise, it actually did. And the nice thing about undermounted slides is that you don't see them when you pull the drawer out. And also these drawer slides have a soft close feature. All right, now that the drawer is in and everything looks good, we can now install our top. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue both sides and also nail it. This piece here will add some structural strength to the drawer, but it will also be what we use to screw the drawer into the wall to create the floating effect. Come on, man. I went back and fixed those, but this is what you have to be careful with when using brad nails, especially ones this long. Now that we have the drawer and side table complete, we can now fill in all of our nail holes and I'm gonna be using Bondo for that. Let's get started. 
The nice thing about Bondo is that it dries in about 15 minutes compared to other wood fillers that can take a couple hours. So I really like it just for time efficiency. So now I'm just gonna wait about five to 10 more minutes and then I can bring it out to the garage and sand everything off and smooth, and then we can start painting. Let's get to it. After sanding off all the Bondo, I began the painting process and I started with primer, specifically a gray primer because I'll be using a black paint. If you use white primer, you'll have to put on a few more coats of your paint color, especially the ones that are darker, like black. I've heard mixed reviews on whether priming is necessary for MDF, as a lot of paints nowadays do come with primer already mixed in. However, I see the best results when I use a separate primer from the paint. And here are the drawer fronts we'll be using. This is actually reclaimed wood from the kitchen demo that we did a few months back, and it'll also match the headboard. All right, now before we start installing our drawer fronts, we first have to install our drawer hardware. And I got these at Home Depot, which I'll link down in the description. So I've already marked out my hole locations on my drawer fronts, so now I'm gonna use my drill to drill through those holes. I'm also gonna make sure to countersink my screws, so that way when I install the drawer front up against the actual drawer, it sits nice and flush. Let's get started. When I drill holes for handles and knobs, I like to use a very small drill bit to start to make sure I get an accurate hole, and then I'll enlarge it with a larger drill bit to make sure that the screw can go through. Then I came back with my countersink bit to make sure that the screw sat beneath the surface of the wood. There we go. All right, so now it's time to attach our drawer front to our actual drawer. This can be a bit of a tricky process as you need to line it up, and with mine being an inset drawer, it's gonna be even more tricky because we don't have much room for margin here. So I'm gonna take my drawer and just push it in here, and I left an eighth of an inch on both the horizontal and vertical sides, so I can move it around just a little bit, but not too much. So I'm gonna take some playing cards and determine how big the gap is at the top if the bottom is perfectly uh, touching. And I found off video that it took about 10 playing cards, meaning I'll take five, and I know that it should be five on top and five on bottom to center the drawer vertically. So now I'm going to push these underneath the drawer on one side, that's five, and then another five on this side just to keep it level. And now I know that the drawer is centered vertically. And then for horizontal, you can do the same thing or you can just do it by eye. And I think that's pretty easy to do it by eye. Um, and I, so now I'm gonna take it back out. And as you can see, I put some double-sided tape here, but the, the backing was still on. So now I'm gonna pull the backing off carefully. And now we're gonna put our drawer back in making sure to align it before adhering it. Okay, that looks about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and push and apply with pressure. Now I should be able to take these out and push the drawer out carefully. And then from here, we can screw it in from the back. To mount the drawers, I just screwed it into the wall using that bracket that we installed earlier. And with them being 18 inches wide, I could find at least one, if not two studs. And I also used some drywall anchors just to supplement it, just to make sure that it was plenty strong. I'm really happy with the drawer slides that I selected, especially that soft close feature. And I love the way the drawer looks inset inside of the box. On the right side, I could only find one stud, so I added some drawl anchors. Each of these is capable of holding 75 pounds, so three of these plus a stud is plenty strong. And 
that's going to be a wrap on this project. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and learned something along the way. And if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. Again, I'll link as many products as I can in the description. And this is actually part six of the bedroom renovation playlist. So you can check out how I built the floating bed, the headboard, the concrete accent wall, and scraped a popcorn ceiling. And we still have a few episodes left in this bedroom renovation series. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. And also we post a new DIY video every single Saturday as we renovate this entire lake house. And this is just one small part of it. So if you're new, you can check out all of our other videos in this playlist. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it'll really help out the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week. Hey there, today I'm gonna show you how to create these. Can you just wait a second? Olive, please. Come here. Come here. Down. Wait. Olive, I'm recording. So now I'm just gonna wait maybe five minutes. Olive, please.